Hey there, welcome back to another video on cryptocurrency. In today's video, we'll be following up on where we left off yesterday. If you recall, we exchanged our fiat for some of our first crypto. Now, we're going to transfer our crypto from Coinbase to a crypto exchange so that we can buy some of the lesser known coins out there that we'd like to get in early on. We're going to be using an exchange called Bittrex, which is one of the most popular out there, but unfortunately it doesn't have every coin. To research coins and where they are traded, your best resource is going to be coinmarketcap.com. You can either find a coin by using the search bar or just by clicking on the list here. For example, I want to know more about one of my favorite coins out there, NEO. So I click on it to be taken to its page where I can first see its price history in both USD and what it's trading for in Bitcoin, which if you don't know yet, Bitcoin is the de facto central currency out there because it has the largest market cap by far. We can also see the market cap over time for NEO in this chart. You can click on the tab here to see where NEO is traded in the crypto universe. And we can see that the highest volume at this moment is on Bittrex, or we could also trade on Binance or any of the other exchanges listed here because they all offer NEO. So now that we have a brief understanding of how to research a coin and where it is traded, we'll now jump over to Coinbase and where we left off yesterday to begin talking about how you would transfer your crypto from somewhere like Coinbase to somewhere like Bittrex. This process is very similar across all the different exchanges out there, and it really is no different than if you were sending crypto to a wallet or to a person. So it's a really good skill to learn now. Here we have the send page on Coinbase, and like we did yesterday, we select our Litecoin wallet and see that we still have the 9.28 Litecoins in there. So now to send our Litecoins to Bittrex, we need a recipient address, kind of like a mail address. To find our address that we'll be sending to, we need to jump over to Bittrex. This is the page you'll see when you log in. It's the directory for the exchange and where you'll look up coins you want to trade. We'll come back to this once we have our Litecoins over here. So we click on our wallets tab in the top right to access our wallets. This page will contain all the different balances for all the different coins you have on Bittrex, which is why I blanked out some of this page. You should take similar precautions to never give out exact balances for your crypto coins. It could make you a target for phishing and theft. That being said, you can freely give out your wallet address because the only thing a thief can do with that is send you money. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay, so to find our Litecoin wallet address, we type in either Litecoin or LTC, it's short code, into this search bar in the top right. This brings up our wallet balance for Litecoin. To get the address, click the plus sign in the blue box. If you were withdrawing your Litecoin from Bittrex, you click the minus sign. Clicking the plus sign brings up the deposit address. You'll have to generate yours by clicking a button, but once you do, go ahead and copy the whole string. Now, be very careful here. Make sure you have the whole thing, because if you don't and you send your Litecoins, you'll lose them forever because you sent to a completely different address. Just leaving out one character can do this. It's like mailing something but getting the address wrong. It won't go to your intended destination. You have to be very cognizant of this step. Okay, so. Now that you've got your address and you've copied it, let's jump back to Coinbase where we'll paste it into the recipient address field. Looks great. Now we'll hit the use max option here to load our entire wallet into the transaction. And we'll go ahead and hit send funds. Coinbase will make you go through a two-factor authentication every time you do this for security purposes. So you'll likely need to pause the video here and set up Google Authenticator on your smartphone if you haven't done so already. This is also the last chance to make sure that everything looks good, so do that. I enter the temporary code from the authenticator and click the confirm button and we've sent our crypto. Coinbase will email to confirm this transaction, which also breaks down the transaction fees. I recommend Litecoin when buying from Coinbase because it has the lowest transaction fees of the big three. So to move that $430 worth of Litecoin, I had to pay less than one cent of fees. Mind you, these are not Coinbase fees. You have to pay some fees whenever moving crypto because that's part of how blockchain works. We can further confirm our funds have been sent, or rather are in the process of sending, by going back to our Bittrex wallets page. 
Clicking this button here will refresh the pending deposits into our account. And we can see that yes, our Litecoin is indeed on its way. However, this is pending six confirmations on the Litecoin blockchain. What this means is that for Bittrex to confirm that the Litecoin transactions, like the one we just sent, is genuine, it needs six successive Litecoin blocks. So we can see how long that will take by using this site, BitInfoCharts, to see the average time a Litecoin block takes to form. Zooming down a bit, we can see that at the time of filming, an average Litecoin block time takes 2.5 minutes. Now, 2.5 times six confirmations means that our deposit will take right around 15 minutes, at which point our funds will be completely accessible on Bittrex. So I'll see you in 15 minutes. Okay, now that 15 minutes have elapsed, I'll click on the refresh button again and voila, our Litecoin is now accessible. Excellent. With that done, we can now trade our Litecoin for other currencies, which is the topic of tomorrow's video. So thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at crypto at readysetgorilla.com.